The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Wednesday, October the 11th, we're looking at the Dow up 97 at 33,836. It might be wrong. I had a check wave, a very low trend reading yesterday. Usually the very next session, it usually happens early in the morning, regardless how high the futures are, that you get a, a, a slight negative. It doesn't tell you how far, but it goes negative, which is always a big surprise. Uh, to those thinking that market can keep going higher, and then it starts a rally. But this time we had a bit of a pullback, but not much. But this 200-period exponential moving average right here, this orange line uh, in the daily chart, says that uh, it's it's bumping into some resistance. What I did draw is, I'll do this now. I, I said that there was this match, this exact price time match from the 25th of November, uh, sorry, 25th of May to the 1st of uh, August to the low of October the 6th, regardless of whether it tested that low or not. That was the, the, the price time match. It didn't get there in price. It got there in time. And together with uh, other, other aspects, one of them being on balance volume and, and other being the inverted when you look at the DOG, which we are still short from August the 1st, this is just a trading position we've got right now because I have a feeling that this arch formation that I drew in is already going to be the test. Now, the arch is up here, but that's just to show you the pattern. It doesn't say you have to hit 34,300 uh, uh, or something like that. It just says this is the arch formation. Any point it could stall. I don't think we, we've made the low for this big move that I'm expecting at some point. It's a move, not the, the move. And uh, so that's the way we, we've treated it. We've taken a little bit of real nice short-term gains, but we're keeping uh, this, this position here, core position of the trading position as we've kept the core position for the short. So it sounds funny, but that's the way I do it. We've got our long still from uh, March 2020. We've got, that was at about 200, I think it was, in the, in the Dow Diamonds, which is now at 300 and what, 330 something. Um, We've still got the October of last year, diamond core position. Uh, so this, these are th positions we hold as core positions, and then we trade around that. All right, enough said of that. Let's go to the S&P. The S&P has something a little different. It, it went to the 200-period moving average, and over the past, uh, well, from late September to early October, it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times it tested the 200-period exponential moving average, either a support or resistance, and now it's powerfully moved away. It's bumping into this dashed line. This is the 50-period uh, exponential moving average. And so far, this is just a very minor little bit of pullback, and it will become a peak A if today it doesn't, the S&P doesn't go above 43.85. Now, I'm not expecting that there's going to be a full peak A and then a peak B and a peak D, uh, a, B, C, D on the upside, each successively high B, peak is alphabetized. I also haven't got a buy signal yet because the stochastic is only at 52%. The MACD is good. The 9 period moving average has not yet crossed positive. So this is a work in progress. Uh, I do see more upside, but I think it's going to start to get much, much choppier. So Q, Q, Q is a nice clue because this, this uh, embraces a number of Different areas. Look, you've got Microsoft in the Dow. You've got Microsoft in the QQQ. You've got Microsoft in the S&P, and so on. So within that context, uh, where is my um, – yes, you've got Apple in the Dow. You've got Apple in the S&P. You've got Apple in the QQQ. But you've got the XLK, which is the S&P financial se uh, tech sector. There's also in a leg B. It, I think – just about by a fraction. Let me just see if it did it or didn't. Yesterday's high was 170.71, and so far today's high is 170.74. So that's gone to an extension of leg B. You cannot make a peak B until there's a lower high. That might 
mean tomorrow or the next day. But yes, look at this. The nine period moving average in the XLK is still positive. You see the green line right there? And you see we did the one-to-one -one perfectly to the downside based on the Chapman Way falling axe formation. A um, couple of things going on here. That is holding well. If you look at the SMHs, they have not crossed negative in the uh, weekly 914 and has held the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. But it looks like it's embracing the top line, that green line. If it breaks above it, wow, it's used that as a propellant and not a repellent. So this is a really important phase. Why? Because the SMH has always believed lead us up and lead us down. We're still short from right there. The all-time high was 161.17 on the 31st of July. We're still short from the 159 area. We did use the SOXS, the three times short to get really nice gains. Now we're out of that for a while. But I haven't yet decided whether I want to get out of the uh, that core position from the short side. Not yet. Okay. So with that said, uh, we're looking, uh, and so I want to mention that the QQQ embraces the XLK, the SMHs, Hack. There are enough stocks in Hack that are there. Look at this. Hack is making a new recovery high. Beautiful move to the upside. This is the prime cybersecurity ETF. I keep talking about it. We missed getting it. Well, we, we didn't miss getting in. I, I wanted to get in. It was holding that level right there. So on Friday, when I said, Let's buy the TQQQ, which is the three times long as a trading position. The Qs, I said, because we've missed the breakout on this falling axe formation in the in hack, and QQQ has them all. So let's just do that. It'll just make it a little bit easier. But as I say, uh, regardless of what's happened right here, we've got um, in the monthly chart, 67 was the high, goes down to about 40, 40. Uh, uh, back in end of uh, 2022, and now it's having a really good retracement, but it's only a retracement so far. Uh, the daily and the weekly look fabulous. Here's a falling X breakout to the upside. There's this cup formation. Uh, so all I can say is finally hack is, and I, it must be this environment that we're in, is really working very, very nicely. And that's because there are stocks like CrowdStrike. Look at that. Breaking out, not to a new high, but a new recovery high. It broke that uh, resistance level in the weekly. You've got PANW, uh, Palo Alto Networks this is at an all-time high. As we speak, this very second at 261.78. So, okay. So with that said, there, this is a very, very mixed market. Um, you've got uh, the, I need to continue here. So let me show you something very interesting. The gold is up eight. So under the conditions that we're looking at in the Middle East, you would have, I not you, but I, uh, going down to the 1820s in gold, I would have said, wow, 70, 80 point gain in over a couple of days. That's what you kind of expect. Well, there is a pretty decent gain in gold. Look at this. It goes from a low in the continuous contract of 1823.5. I don't know if you like to type the numbers here because it's a, it's a, continuous contract so it gets changed the numbers get changed all the time not the pattern or anything else this is a single leg eight to the upside with a huge gap i'm not sure that gap's going to be filled in very soon but i think gold gdf this time i have to say this is a pretty decent rally i'll be down. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Just real quickly, I want to get a couple of these questions that I had. I don't want to run out of time. So 16.23 um, VFC is up 23 cents. You see this nine period moving average, how it's been a resistance level since it made that peak F top. Uh, back in August at about 21. I don't even know what it's called. It's called uh, VF Corporation. VFC is the symbol. Uh, yeah, this is a nice start. The MACD has a lot of work to do. Stochastics uh, flat at 22%. On balance volume did have a little pop. I, I would just say that this is a difficult one. If there is a story attached to it, uh, that's good. It needs a story, a backdrop, that is. And it needs to close above 1667, the 14p moving average. To get the pink crossing the, the black, uh, the nine crossing the 14, it's going to take a move into the uh, 1730s or something like that. So this is a work in progress. I Keep an eye on it. I, I, I don't see anything right now. And yes, that ASPN has been spectacular. ASPN, I discussed it the other day. ASPN, Aerogels, Inc., does everything that you think would be the, the sexy phase right now. Uh, laser, ex, uh, laser sensors, thermal insulation, waste management for molten, molten metals, optics and light guides, electronic development, and capacitators, imaging, oh man, pesticide, oh, catalysts, um, and uh, cosmic dust collection. <laughs> All I can say is, it's got all the all the stuff you'd be looking for in a market like this, and it's running very nicely. The resistance at 8.88, the 200 period exponential moving average. It didn't get there before, but if it gets even just today's high is 880, another two pennies, and then bing, it becomes a magnet. It'll just grab the price, and then it'll stick there for a little while. So you see this pattern in the weekly chart. You see the way that it's basically in a an arch formation that becomes a cup formation. Um, I can take this away just for now. This right side, the uh, quoro, that's the quarter uh, of the arch formation. That's the semicircle. This is the quarter of the semicircle because the, the upside momentum is uh, very strong. But you see this chart? Have a look at this chart right here. This is this pattern where you've got the rectangle formation and it keeps bumping, bumping, bumping into the resistance. 
it did not, as of now, push over and then has to close above 8.08. .08. What am I talking about? UNG. Question came in, had one of our tigers, they did a beautiful job, traded UNG, got out just, I think, either at D or on the leg D on the way up, made a peak D with this move down today, but we got to wait for the end of the day because 769 is the high so far today in the United States Natural Gas Fund, and uh, 794 was the high yesterday. A penny above 794 and it starts an extension of leg D, uh, one penny below, and that caught, you call it a peak D. So I'd say how over the next week or so the UNG can trade and then place a close over this high. It just has to do it once, and that starts leg C. But to be really positive, over the next two out of three weeks, I said I could even go two out of four weeks. I want to see at least two closes nicely above the high that we're looking at of 8.08, .08, I believe it is, 8.08, .08, made on the 11th, the week of the 11th of August. So far, this is really good action. Um, peak D, pullback. Uh, yeah, I thought I drew this. Uh, maybe I'll have to draw it again. So what I normally would do is I'd go from this side. I'd find the plumb line. And if it's a low, that's great. In this case, I'm a little late to look at it. So I have to move it over. So I'm going to move it over to here in this, this candle right here. So I'm going to move it there. And then I'm going to click to say extend that. Make it green because that's the, uh, there you are. And see if you've got a chapel move inside using your, your the formula of your technique. Can you get a chapel wave inside wedge target repellent line? Well, let's go to this low right here. Go all the way up. Yes, it hit it exactly and is pulling back from that level. Uh, make that a green dashed on the way up. Yeah, so the question is, where would I re-enter? So where would you re-enter? Because it's a work in progress, I haven't got a buy signal at all in the weekly, even though it's been uh, since the April low of 5.87 and was making slightly higher lows before that. So I can go back all the way for the rectangle. Um, I should go to this high right here. There. So... It says you're still in the rectangle, and a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Uh, so let's just watch this closely, because I think that gas, natural gas, is forming a base. Now, there's a rule of thumb. I used to do this, and then I remember, what's the name, Yamana? She had this expression say, that said, the longer the base, the higher the race, the, higher, the longer the base, the higher the space, something like that. Um, so look at this. We've got um, this rectangle formation. And if it starts to move, I, I, I will try to call Trade Station one of these days. I just didn't bother to call because I have to go through engineers and all that stuff. I, I probably could post something. I just never post. I think once back in 2020, 2002 or something, I posted something. But basically, I'd like to go click right there and have that the fulcrum and then swing, swing it up. And that takes you to 20. Well, I'd love to do that because every once in a while, you really do get, I remember gold, the XAU back in 2000, I think it was 2000, was at 45. And I got this fabulous buy signal, it was at 45. And that, that was because it had this huge bowl formation. This was this is flat, but that was a really a multi, multi-year flat bowl formation like like a dish and took a long time to break and when it broke out wow gold had a spectacular move so i don't know about natural gas other than to say on the chart the monthly chart is just horrible the weekly chart is static the, the daily chart looks great and um but where would i get in so i'm going to suggest because you've already had profits now you're in a completely different position uh, s p so i'm going to say why don't we do this? Uh, if, it, if it suddenly bounces tomorrow, you've lost a, a very nice opportunity right here at 758. But 758 from the high of yesterday, which was 794, did I say? Yeah, 794. 
so that's not very much. That's about what twelve, uh, about six, five to six percent. I would prefer if it pulled back just a little more, scare everyone who just got in, and go into this candle here. So this is the way I would do it. I would nibble right here at 758. Now, this is because you've got profits and because there's a chance over a period of three weeks that we could be seeing 965. You could even see $10 on natural gas, I'd say, over a period of six weeks, four to six weeks. This is a different thing altogether. I'm going to say at 757, just kind of put your foot in the door, just like a little nibble. And then let's watch it, and tomorrow we'll look at it and see that 9 period moving average of 742. If it hasn't hit 742 by tomorrow, um, if it doesn't do that by Friday, I wouldn't be surprised if it was coming Monday, it's back at 780 or higher. So just a nibble, start, to put your foot in the door. The Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, um, just I had a question about Annette, A N E T, Arista Networks uh, trading down eight at 186. So, this is what I love to do. When I've got, so the question is, got a downgrade today, looking for a good place to add. You see, there's a big difference if you're in anything from lower down and then it has this digestive phase. That's the reason why I spend so much time and subscribers know. I try to get the outside of the, of whatever we're looking at. I try to get the exact low. People always say, oh, you can never get the low. You can never, we try to get the middle. Yeah, I love getting the middle if you can get the middle. 
But I try really hard to get the exact turnaround because it gives you this cushion. So now if you've got this, do you see the inside track, travel wave inside track repellent zone in the weekly? It went to a peak E. It's kind of struggling. It's taken a little, quite a bit of time. It's taken one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, and it didn't quite get there. The high was uh, just under 200 uh, yesterday, and here we are with an, uh, an all-time high. I believe it's an all-time high of 198.70 uh, the week of the 1st of September, and yesterday's high was 198.46, 24 cents, uh, I think, something like that, below. But look at the daily chart. It says you've made your cup formation. This is what we call the drop bucket pattern, where you test the left side high. It's like a backhoe. You know how the backhoe has this big bucket and lifts up the gravel or anything, and then it hits this level and it opens the bucket and whoops, the price falls down. That's exactly what we're looking at. But yeah, wait, the MACD is good, but nothing nearly as good as it was back at those two doji candle highs, all-time highs back at the 198 level of uh, beginning of September. The, the stochastic was up in the uh, almost 90% 90 area. On balance volume was fabulous. And then a pull back. Well, the stochastic now is flat at 86, holding quite nicely. The on-balance volume is slightly lower. Both of them are lower than they were back at that high of September the 1st. MACD is way lower, but that 9 period moving average is still very good. So let me uh, suggest that if the general market and the, the Dow went down to the plus 20s after being up 100 and something, uh, now it's up 78. So the buying just keeps coming in, keeps coming in. The S&P is not quite as strong as up four. So let's just say that if uh, you want to add to a position, the right side of this is saying to me, look, it has the weekly chart. The stochastic is only at 74%, not at 80 or higher. On balance volume is good. MACD is just about across negative. I got uh, oh, two and a half days to go. And the, the nine is way over the 14. So it says to me you're in a digestive phase. We've re had a retest with a. Oh, it's amazing how many charts go to almost the exact penny sometimes after months or years or even in this case days, and then it turns down. But that doesn't mean to say because the right side is not as strong as the left side that oh now it's going to go all the way down to fill the gap in the under 170 or to the 161 uh, 200 period exponential moving average. What it does say is, be careful. You've made a cup formation. Now you're probably forming some kind of an arch formation. And I would just say to you, I, don't, I would not be in a rush to add, even though the X, um, XLK, I don't know if this is in the XLK, Arista Networks, is acting very well. I would just hold off, let's see if, say if there's a follow through down day and it gets to 183. <clears throat> I'd say to you, start a split position of whatever you were going to put to work right in this phase to add to your, your because as a, a long-term chart, this is fabulous action. Look at this monthly chart. That is just a work of beauty. Um, it has a big consolidation that breaks out, and then it has one bar rest from C to D. That's one month. Two bars from D to E, and then starts leg E, and this is leg E all the way through to the end of this month if there's no new high above that uh, high that was made on the 1st of September. So don't rush, but I would say you could start a split position by adding part. If it was done by I, I would say in the 182 area, it's at 187 if you can get it. But if it does go to 182, be prepared that there's the lows in the 178 is it 177, 177 area. That's going to have to hold. And I think in this environment, it could hold. So don't do anything just yet. Next question came in, and I heard a little ping from my engineer. So let me just go right here and say, we've got Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike in Ormond Beach, how are you? Good morning, Basil. Uh, Basil, I've got a question uh, regarding the S&P futures uh, forward slash ESZ23. Yes, okay. And my question to you is if, if we were going to um, – make a lower low in these markets, uh, what area of resistance do you think we could expect a good turnaround? I, I use an, a moving average that I learned from another technician, and it's the 34 EMA. 
Okay. And yesterday and today, it came up to that, and and uh, it acted as resistance. Um, so do you feel we are at a good resistance area now, or do you think we could go a little bit higher, maybe the, you know, like the 50 EMA? Yeah, so the 50 EMA is trading right now at um, 44.33. 40. I don't know, is that what you get? Uh, well, on, on my futures, I, I, I'm i sorry, I don't have the 50 EMA. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, All right. So um, this is what I'd be looking at. Let me just extend this. Okay. So I've done this now. I've extended the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone based on that falling axe technology tech, technical analysis that I always do. And it says that the whole area of the 4450s to 4460s is going to be strong resistance if two things happen. Number one is the pullback that we're going to get between today, this afternoon, I, I, sus I could be totally wrong, but I do think we're getting some kind of a peak A in the E-mini. I've got the continuous contract, but it's got exactly the same price. I have that because I can go all the way back in the monthly charts. I can't get that with the futures, the December futures, so I'm using the continuous contract. So we're on the same page. It doesn't matter. If you look at the weekly chart, the weekly chart went S, meaning nine period moving average, went under the 14 period moving average. To get it to turn mm -hmm. positive again, you'd have to probably get to the 44, the 44, 40s. So as it stands right now, the weekly chart is still in a sell mode. I haven't even got a sell, a buy signal to change that. The daily mm -hmm. chart is still in a sell mode. I haven't even got a sell, a, a buy signal because the stochastic's only at 51%. On balance runs rounding, but it's not great. The MACD is good, and the nine period moving average has a long way to go before the pink can turn positive, and then both of them will cross over the 200 period moving average, which says 4362 support. So I call this a work in progress. So just, if you don't mind, I'll just give you a kind of an overall thing which will cover exactly what you're talking about. I'm suspecting that the last big move up was to a peak B, and that was that started the move for the what I call the falling axe formation downtrend line. What, what do we have time? Yes, we do have time. Um, and that was on the first of September, and that was at 45.97, and that went to a peak B. If I do the same kind of measurement, it says you could get to the 40, 44.50s. Hey, you want to hold on just a moment, and I'll, I'll finish yes. it up when you get yes, back. Yes, I'll okay. hold. Folks, we'll be back with Mike. The Dow's up uh, 60. SB's only up three and a half. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So A2B in the fan just pointed out to me that ASPN just hit exactly the 200 period exponential moving average back to when a penny or two above it. Isn't that amazing? I guess a lot of people listen to TFNN uh, because that was a very quick move. Now, this is what I would say. I, I, I was going to think that I'd do this on, on, on Monday, but I'm going to go right back to Mike. Mike, the S&P, uh, as I see it at this particular point, um, this move away from the 200 period moving average is really important. And the higher we go away from it, the less important it becomes. But if at any point over the next week, and I'm going to give it a whole week, if over the next week there is a pullback to the 4320, 4300 level in this peak A, or maybe even a B, but just a fractional higher, higher to make that leg B maybe tomorrow, um, then I'm going to be saying to you, this is the evidence of that power of the nine period moving average going negative in the weekly chart. So I have tremendous respect. I call it the uh, the technical tool of last resort, at least as far as I'm concerned. Of course, the others, but this is kind of the one that always impresses me as saying you were right or you were wrong. I'm confirming whatever you were thinking. So that to me is very important. It says that at this particular point, this is more like an over, a very oversold bounce. For it to turn into something else, <clears throat> I would have to see maybe by the end of the day, instead of pulling back a little bit more in the Dow, you actually see the Dow going up to about the 33,900 level. And the S&P, today's high is 43.77. It actually goes to 43.85. And then I'm going to say to you, wow. That is sustained buying. Every time there's a bit of a pullback, buyers come in, and that should last a little longer. But I'm looking at this as a kind of a, a bounce that could last into next week. I'm not sure if it lasts the whole of October, but it could go into next week. And the power of each uh, each sector move is going to be very important. I, I earlier spoke, I don't know if you heard it, about the rotation, even the XLK or the S&P or the QQQs how the, so many stocks are overlapping and it's kind of helping to move higher. So when you're looking at it in this perspective right now, um, if the nine period moving average doesn't just cross positive, but it expands, that means the aperture, the distance between, then it'll become a green moving average over the black one. That's going to give me a sense of how it fills like the S&P has this gap on the left side with about a 4,400 a resistance, how it takes it out, and you've got that very ugly candle, how it handles things like that. It's going to be so important that the, the move down back on the 20th of, of September from the high of 44.61 to a low of uh, 44.01. I mean, that, and then gaps down the next day. If we start to fold that in, it means that's now history. There's a whole bunch of new buyers coming in. We haven't got to that point. So to answer your question, I think we're getting closer to a test of what could be resistance. 
and that'll be probably for my eyes is 43, 85 to 43, 90s, that area, how it takes it out if it does. That's number one. And number two is how the 4321 area, and then I'm going to go a little lower, 4318 support holds if there is a pullback over the next week or so. I don't know if that helps you, but that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, that's great, Basil. You gave me resistance and support levels to watch, so that's great help. Good. Okay, Mike, let's be in touch again and see what happens in a couple of days or a week. Thank you, Thank Basil. you for calling. Thank you very much for calling. So, folks, this is really important. Um, you see the the vacillation in the market, how on the way up, and, and I must say, um, I had a couple of very, very uh, tight stops. When I say tight stops, I'm talking about less than a point, because if I get it right, I get it right. And in each one of those moves from about right here, just I got them right, but I got out a little quickly and I moved down, but it was a tight stop. And then over here, I got in just shorting, shorting. And just like I'm talking about, you know, not even a half a point. But I missed this one, and I was absolutely adamant. And the reason why I missed this one is because I had already tried two, three times, and I thought, you know what? It's still green. The nine-period moving average is green. Yes, the MACD is uh, uh, um, this is the one-minute chart. Yes, the MACD is deflecting lower. It hadn't actually turned yet, but right there it was deflecting lower. Um, the on-balance volume had given some kind of a sell signal right there, and yet it went a fraction or higher. And then I missed this one. I always chuckle because, I mean, you, you're not the market. You're just trying your very best to do an analysis of the market using techniques possible. And then look what happened from that level where I didn't short at 44.05. It went all the way down to this one, two, three, four, five time hit bottom at 40, right there, at 40, uh, 43.92. And I'm on the show, so I really didn't want, I didn't want to do anything. Couldn't get to the 200 period moving average, and now the, the S&P is negative. And I had this alternate count G right here in the one minute chart. And look at this, you're gonna laugh when you see it. Look, here's the five minute chart with a G slash C, also an alternate count. And yet, once it turned pink, stayed pink, and now we are down. And is the Dow, no, the Dow is still up 37. I've got I, the technique that I use is Chaffin Wave Trend Gauge. I'll just show it to you right here. For, um, let me just give it to you right here. I've X'd out. I've X'd out in those days where it failed. Um, but look, this is when the, the Trend Gauge is high. Within the next day or two, there should be a sharp move up in the S&P. Even if the market is down, be prepared that you're going to have a sharp move up that could surprise you with the speed and the power, and then it'll fail. And on the way down, those very rare occasions that there's a very low reading of Richard Arms. Uh, he calls it the uh, Arms Index. Um, I call it the Trin Gauge because it's based on the short-term trading index, Trin. Um, when it's low, invariably the very next morning, sometimes it's before the open, even if the futures, Dow futures are up sharply, it goes negative. Sometimes you have to wait for a little while. And I've even seen where the futures were up 200 points before the market opened, then in the market was up 350 points in real life, and it, and it went to just a plus 20, and then it closed, it, it, and then it, it had a little bit of a bounce. It didn't actually go negative. I have to call that a miss. So let's get back to what we're looking at here because I now got questions about the stocks. I want to look at some of the gold stocks. Um, so the question came in. Let me just see here. Yes, I will look. Uh, nibble at Meta. I'll, I'll, go, I'll do that right now. M-A-T-A. -A. So Meta is um, Meta Platforms. I don't know if I ever say that Meta Platforms. Ah. I mean, Facebook is what it was. Facebook to me is what it is, still is. This is a very nice move up. Over the previous high in August, it's trading at uh, 326.64, up 4.80. This is a magnificent seven. Look at that monthly chart. And that's why I'm saying there is still room to the upside. And the reason why we went long is because it matters acting very, when would you nibble? You know what I'm going to suggest? Um, because you're looking a longer term and I'm suspecting 
that Google is going to, 384 was the, I'll do this when we get back. Going off to Russia, Google's at 326, the all-time high was 384. We'll be back, Dow's up 51, S&P's up B. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, I didn't have a chance because there were other things going on during the break that I had to get to. Uh, <clears throat> I like this action in Meta, and I think it's the same with Google. Um, I was asked about that the other day, and I said, yeah, it's acting extremely well. So both of these are very good. I'm going to say start a split position, <clears throat> grab some right now as your add-on in Meta, <clears throat> and if it can pull back, um, well, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but if it can pull back towards the 320 level uh, or 318, that's where you would add another little bit. But I like it very much. I like the fact that it's trying to uh, it's trying to be independent of all the thinking that's going on, the market or whatever. It's just been moving up for consistently since September, even when the market was pulling back. I like that independence. So that's that. Next thing is I just wanted to say for the GDX, um, the GDX trading at 28.12. You know, it was at 25. So the, this three-point move to the upside, that's a 11, 12%. That's a very nice gain. So I, if you look at some of the individual stocks, uh, I, I just go to ASA, which was acting very poorly the other day. And even now, it's not acting too great. If I go to Newmont Mining, <clears throat> it was acting much better. 
So be very selective. But if you look at the weekly charts and monthly, wow, they have a long way to go. So I would say uh, start positions in the gold stocks and, you know, something like, you know, uh, Tom has this fantastic newsletter with the gold stock. Just get really good opinion about it. But I would also say I wouldn't get too carried away just yet because, you know, that dollar, I know people keep talking about the dollar. The dollar is down, but it's taken one, two, three, four, five, six sessions just to go underneath this up channel support line. Sometimes you get a bounce that goes back into the channel for a little bit to make that dreaded H pattern. And that's where the real test for gold comes in. If the dollar rallies a little bit, does gold pull back sharply or do these stocks really hold well? That's going to be the clue. Um, all right. With that said, have a great rest of the day. Um, and I don't think I can do a, a, a um, Larry show because I have to go for an eye check.